Good afternoon, and thank you so much for being here today. This is a phenomenal organization that's doing important work in our community. And so when we're here today to acknowledge, uh, but please do more than acknowledge, please invest in this organization and in the work that this organization does. Uh, and far more importantly than this organization, in those families and children uh, that the organization serves. I'm Melvin Carter and I serve as executive director of the Minnesota Children's Cabinet. Uh, I work alongside uh, Governor Mark Dayton. Uh, on behalf of children and families, I lead an interagency effort that primarily consists of our state's education, health, and human services agencies with the general uh, premise uh, that we can do more uh, with and for children and families across our state uh, working together uh, than we can do working separately. Uh, I'm really proud to work uh, with uh, a governor who understands the importance of young children. Uh, you know, this is built on uh, about 20 years of, of, of science and research, and I like to say about a thousand years of human experience uh, that says, you know, when we think about brain science and we, when we think about how children develop, uh, the stakes uh, are, are more important than, than, than we ever really understood. You know, when we talk about ACEs, those adverse childhood experiences, when you talk about the toxic stress that children experience uh, in, in, in early childhood, uh, we used to think that, you know, those things probably influence the way they think about the world and the way they approach things uh, for the rest of their life. What we've learned through brain science and brain development research is those experiences literally shape the, the architecture and chemistry of their brain for the rest of their lives, right? Um, when, when we're young, you may have seen these pictures and drawings of young brains. When we're young, uh, our brains have those synapses firing and more connections than any of us have right now. And our brain is a learning organism, so it's constantly trying to figure out which of these synapses do I have, do I need to strengthen, and which of these am I not using? Can I let go? Can I pair is the process. It's called pairing, right? Which of these can I let go of so I can strengthen the ones that I'm using? And so when children grow up homeless and when children grow up feeling unloved, and insecure environments, it, it, it informs their brain which synapses to strengthen and which synapses to let go. That's scary. We've also learned through a lot of research coming out of Minnesota that we as a community can make no greater investments. So sorry to you financial planners in the room. We as a community can make no financial investments that yield a greater return than investing in our young children. That's critical to know. I come to this work uh, from a local community, from St. Paul. I was a city council member representing St. Paul's Frogtown and Summit University areas, uh, some of our most challenged and diverse communities in St. Paul. I remember when I was running for office, and we talk a lot about the disparities that Minnesota faces. We're, in all of the areas we're very proud of as a state. We're proud to be a homeowner state. We're proud to be a state of wealth and low unemployment. Uh, we're proud to be a state of high educational outcomes. Uh, and in all of those areas, we also lead the country in disparities. I remember thinking and saying when I was running for city council the first time as a young, uh, idealistic 26-year-old uh, guy running for office, uh, I love Minnesota. I just want more of it in my neighborhood. And so we set about with all these bold ambitions for creating jobs and, and, and creating housing and, and expanding transit and expanding economic opportunity in our community. And I would tell people about that. And every now and then somebody would say, well, what about education? What about our kids? And I would explain to them that our schools are run by our school board, which is a separate legal fiduciary and political entity. And their eyes would glaze over and they'd walk away saying something very complimentary about me under their breath. There was one mom who didn't walk away at all. She got upset and she looked at me and yelled, I don't need a civics lesson, I need some help. And that inform that's informed, that conversation has informed my public service ever since. We started this thing called the St. Paul Promise Neighborhood, which if you understand the work of the Northside Achievement Zone uh, is similar work, but across the river in St. Paul. To say, how do we, the, the word we had in mind was build a campus, right? How do we build our community as a campus? Just like when I, when I was in college, we slept here and we shopped there and we studied there. And it was all intentionally organized to support learning. 
So we wanted to figure out how to do that. The Northside Achievement Zone is doing that really well with a lot of important support from the family partnership. Because what we realize is we're, we're, we're investing in children, we're investing in programs. We have a long history of investing in programs. And for some reason in Minnesota, we get it really, really right for so many children and families and really, really wrong for so many others. And it's so predictable that we can walk through a hospital right now. And if I know what a child looks like, where a child lives and what that child's parents educational outcome it would is is I could predict to you with stunning and tragic accuracy what those children's life outcomes would be before they ever even get a chance that's not right it's not right for those children and it's certainly not right for our state we got to do better and doing better means not just doing more of the same we have we we certainly advocate for more funding streams and i'm proud to work with the governor uh, and a legislature who's put hundreds of millions of dollars new dollars into early childhood i, I love the governor's proposal right now to add pre-k to add resources for family home visiting to add resources for child care i think those things are important but it's not just doing more it's doing better and that's taking up that charge that that mother told me I don't need a civics lesson, I need help. We need an approach that makes it easier for people to connect to resources. We need an approach, if we're really serious about children, we need to be thinking about families. If we're really serious about children, we need to be thinking about stable communities. And if we're really serious about making sure our kids are ready for kindergarten, that our kids are prepared uh, to succeed in the future, in life and in the workforce of the future, then we gotta figure out how it shouldn't be a full-time job for their families to connect to the resources that they need. We ought to come up with ways to connect families to, 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 to uh, health care opportunities and, and to, to mental health resources uh, and to counseling and to preschool and to all those types of resources that help support family stability. What you have to know is this isn't a new approach. This is a really old approach. Jeff Canada, who's one of the I'm sorry, Jeff Canada, who's the founder uh, of the Harlem Children's Zone, always talks about how we uh, over, o overthink what poor children need. He always says, you know, we, we know what children need. We, many of us in this room have children. I have children. I know what my children need some days. <laughs> Others, I have no idea. But in general, we know that our children need a square meal. We know that our children need, 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 need to know where they're going to sleep tonight. They need stability in life. We know that they need to be able to, to, to trust their relationship with a caring adult, maybe more than one, hopefully more than one. We know that they need to, to, to be able to have that predictable life that they can be kind of confident uh, and, and, and stable in. We know these things and providing these things around them, just like that mother told me, uh, families' lives don't always organize themselves conveniently into the service buckets that we kind of provide services and provide funding around. That's why an organization like the Family Partnership is so important. Being able to connect families, being able to connect people in a family way, in a two generation way, right? So, so, so that they're able to connect with those resources in a way that's convenient, uh, in a way that's accessible, uh, in a way that's uh, easily to access, in a way that allows them to get back to work or get back to school, or get back to learning, or just get back to telling their children bedtime stories. That's phenomenal. When we see a video that shows a family like that, that's phenomenal. But 30,000, this organization is doing that kind of work for over 30,000 individuals in our community. I believe the number was 24,000 families in our community. That's transformational. That's what's transformational. It's not just more, it's better. That's what this organization is doing. That's why I've become such a fan of the family partnership. When we talk about this, this comprehensive and integrated approach, it sounds good, but I want you to know that means making it easier for families to be stable which makes it more possible for children to thrive. That's why this work is so transformational and so important when we connect the work uh, to advocate for families, the work to educate those children, when we connect all of that work together, that's what we're doing in our, that's what we're trying to do in our individual families. And that's what, we, that's what it ought to mean to be a family, to raise children and to be a child 
uh, in St. Paul, in Minneapolis, in the whole state of Minnesota. That's what this work is. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you investing in this organization. I appreciate you staying at the table to make sure that as we build uh, our community, as we build this organization, as we build our children, we're doing it with an understanding of both that last 20 years of science and those last thousand years of human experience that say this is the approach that works and this is what we ought to be doing. I'm Melvin Carter and I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for investing in this organization.